Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Accountants Connection webinar series brought to you by Your Business First. My name is Darren Sherry. I'm the CEO and Principal Consultant of Your Business First, and, and today we're presenting the webinar on your client onboarding process. So let's get started. So what we're going to talk about today is what, uh, what an onboarding process is and why we need one. Um, your business first has developed a seven step process to an onboarding um, uh, process. You could have more, you could have less, um, depending on what, what the outcome is of, of this particular webinar. So um, then we're going to talk about some thoughts and, and, and the summary on which things you need to consider uh, in relation to having an onboarding process and um, any questions that you might have. If you do have any questions during the course of the webinar, please um, click on the Q&A box and uh, write those questions or queries. And I'd like to thank the people who provided some questions um, at the registration stage um, during the process. And hopefully we can cover that. Hopefully we can cover um, all those questions as we're moving along in the webinar. So let's get started. The aim of the webinar is a, a few things, but by definition, I classify as the onboarding process from an inquiry stage to a sign-up stage, not before or not after. Most of, the, most of the accounting firms on this particular webinar will have uh, an on onboarding process, but whether it's documented or it's in your mind, um, I think on the bottom line, all the onboarding process should be uh, documented for other people, uh, team members can, to use as well. And as such, we want to have a structured approach to the onboarding process and have, a, and have a consistent process from go to work. We want to have a process for any client that comes on board, but for this webinar, we're going to focus on um, clients who operate um, a business or, or a company. So first and foremost, why do we need a, um, a proper client onboarding process? Look, there's a few things. One is uh, to me would be less churn. So we can build a solid relationship from the outset and, and demonstrate value to the to the lead um, right right from right from the get go. We'll be more efficiency doing doing the simple things extraordinarily well. We'll definitely have happier clients because they'll stay longer, become advocates of your firm, and with the with and with buyer which also includes the experience that they've had when you've signed them up as a client and what and the journey did you take into um, thus far. You'll get more clients, um, which will be free marketing, as they'll tell your business, um, tell their business associates, friends uh, about you as a firm, and it ensures compliance, uh, particularly in relation to the engagement letter, which I'll go through in detail later on in this webinar. Um, it will definitely reduce scope creep, and manage, and you also be managing their expectations as well. But the bottom line is that it'll be part of your documented processes and procedures. So therefore, if there's anything, any gaps or any um, instances in, in the onboarding process where you need to talk about or refine or review, or look at, then it's all documented and, and we can change it according to that. So, step one, the lead manager. So probably the most common forms of um, inquiries in relation to your um, accounting firm could be inbound calls, referrals, walk-ins, or web inquiry. For this particular example, the inbound call or a, a referral. So a particular lead will contact us and contact you and want to speak to you about um, how you can help them in their firm. So if you have if you have a reception, if you have a receptionist or other person that can do this for you, that's great. But if it's you, then you can qualify the lead um, accordingly. Um, you, may have, you may have particular people in your business that um, can bring on the lead themselves. For example, if it's an individual tax return, it might be an accountant or a manager. If it's a, a contractor or a startup business, it might be another person in your firm. But if it's a, a big business, um, that, um, or a business that's been around for a while, it could be you. So as far as the onboarding process is concerned, it could be any, anybody in, in your firm, but just as long as it's, doc it's, it's, um, it's documented. But uh, for me, I strongly recommend that any, cl any client or in any inbound lead that comes in, it's always um, uh, meeting with the partner. 
So whether it's an income tax return or a, or a large business as well. So then what you can see on the screen there is that once we clarified um, who, who, can, who the team member can um, see the, um, the lead, um, we can, we can, we've got a script there where if they're available, what we need to do, but if they're not available, what we need to do in relation to um, getting leads, the, the leads details or um, following them up in, in due course. So in step two, uh, once the once the the, uh, the partners has the opportunity to speak to the to the lead, then we'll qualify the lead. So this is where we can ask the probing questions: Who are the decision makers in their business? Why are why are they leaving their current um, accountant? What are they hoping to gain from going into a new accountant? What is the definition of success to them? How does how does their business look like in three years? And what is their plan for succession when their business is finished and they want to uh, move on? There could be um, more probing questions that you can ask them, but again, we, we need to have those documented as part of the script and as part of the process moving forward. We can gather more information as well in relation to um, the, their business, finding out a, a bit more, getting the, um, what industry they're in, uh, their job description, the number of employees that they have, and obviously their personal details as well for, um, in relation to sending out the information for a proposal if, if it's going to be the right fit. But if so, if, once we ask these, these probing questions and once we gather all the information, if they do fit your target market or client type, then we organise a meeting. And a tip here is that we, we insist that all decision makers will be in the meeting um, in, a, in, a, in attendance. As you know, that from, from previous experience, it, it, it best serves that all decision makers will be, it will be in attendance so that it won't delay any processes in relation to signing up a client or any delays in um, information or misinformation that's passed on from the attendee to the other decision makers and if they didn't attend. But in the email that we send out to the, we'll send out an email to, the, uh, to that lead in relation to confirming the appointment with an agenda. Um, you may, you, you may and you should link some, some testimonials, whether they're written or video to your, uh, to your email. Um, any articles that you've written or website information that you have or social media pages that you have, att attach that too. Just to give the, the lead the opportunity to, to verify that, hang on, these guys are on, on top of their game and they're quite modern in the way they operate their practice. But more importantly, again, mention that you are looking forward to meeting all decision makers in there. In the, in, in the email. And another thing that you can do 24 hours before the meeting is that either send out another email to remind them that the meeting is, um, is the following day or um, send out an SMS to their um, by, by text or by phone. So during the time that we, uh, from the time we've qualified the lead to the time we're of the meeting, then we can find out a bit more information about the client. So we can do some internet searches, some police checks, um, and do some company individual searches. A great example of why this is necessary is because I worked with a client about 18 months ago in which they signed up a, a they signed up a new client, um, signed the engagement letter, did the work, but um, the client never paid and we had to um, get um, a debt, a debt, collect, debt collection agencies to um, follow up the client. What we found out just through basic internet searches is this particular client had set up another company previously and underpaid their employees and they were um, wanted, by, wanted by the, uh, the ATO and police for, um, for mispaying their employees. So you'd be very surprised at what we can find on the internet and Maybe as far as signing up a client and as far as onboarding a client, a police check wouldn't go, wouldn't, um, wouldn't be a bad idea. So we've, we've qualified the lead, we've organised the meeting and we're going to have the meeting now. So what, what should we include in that meeting? We've set out the agenda and we're going to conduct the meeting. So the meeting could be conducted in your office or could be conducted at the leads premises. And as I mentioned before, the lead, uh, I would prefer if we meet at the, uh, at the leads premises. 
uh, given that you can find out a bit more about the business and the way they operate and have a walk around and see um, uh, how they operate from a um, from a, um, a workflow and from a processing and from an efficiency point of view. But one thing we should include in the meeting, and, if, and again, if you do have a team, is that whether it's a meeting that is in your office or is at the client's premises, to have an, have an accountant who will be working, who you anticipate be working on the file in that meeting. So this will give the opportunity for the client to, to um, at the outset that this accountant will probably be the uh, first point of call, and there's any issues, inquiries to be made um, that go through the accountant first. But more importantly, you'll free up your time um, as well, and you can also be um, working with the, um, give the opportunity for the client to, to let them know that uh, we work as a team, and there'll be other people working on the file that to, to, uh, to be processing their work. Um, so, we've organised the meeting and we've had the meeting, but there could be an, an issue involved in relation to uh, what happens if the lead is not the right fit. And this could have been discovered also in step two as well. And there could be possible reasons why it's not a good fit, uh, that the work doesn't match your objectives or strengths, the lead's business, is, uh, business doesn't align to your values. Uh, you don't have value, uh, they don't have value in points of your work or, or the work to, to be done by the, your accounting team, their attitude, but probably most importantly, your gut feel as well and how you're feeling about this particular client. Are you willing and able to uh, work with, with them? So as one of the questions that's come across um, at the registration uh, posed, there's probably a polite way that you can um, say no to the client. But the bottom line is just to be honest and say we can't work together for, for a particular reason. And you could all, and what, what I would do as well is that I would also give them alternatives that there might be another accountant um, down the road that may be able to um, um, serve them, or there might be a um, another type of uh, that we don't work with these particular type of businesses as well. But just remember this as a tip. A potential client decides they don't want to appoint you, then they'll have no problem saying so. So why would it be a problem for you um, to say no to them as well? So we've sat down with the client. We, we believe we can work with them. They are a good fit for our firm and um, we want to continue work, and we want to work with them. So what do we do? Well, I believe there's a three-step process of what we need to do is first of all, when we get back into the office, we'll get back into our desk, we'll send them an email to, to, to them, thanking them for the meeting and um, advising them that um, a proposal will be sent out to them within the next 24, 48 hours. And obviously we've got to stick by that. Number two is that we, and again, if you do have a, a team around you, speak to the team so they can prepare the proposal and the engagement letter. Um, and also obviously CC you in into the email, but making sure and letting them know that the client, the, to the client, that they, uh, they must sign off before the work starts. And as a tip in your engagement letter, give them a due date when they need to sell, sign the engagement letter boy, otherwise it becomes null and void. We just do not want to um, stretch out the, the process of chasing up the client make, um, if they're gonna make a decision or not. At your business first, look, I strongly encourage all firms to provide engagement letters to your clients. As you know, engagement letters define the business agreement between you and your client and it outlines the fee structure, responsibility, obligations of the firm and the client, etc. But you know, without it, it, it can be um, present a legal limbo. But the engagement letter also, it's not just a contract, it serves other purposes as well. It sets out the expectations. So basically what's agreed upon in the meeting that you have with the client, and it will lay a solid foundation for a working relationship between, between you and the client. And this, this will also ensure transparency and demonstrate the, prof um, the professionalism right from the start. This will definitely reduce scope creep. Um, as we indicate the services what, um, in, the, in the engagement letter, what, but the basis of the understanding from the discussions and from the, from the meetings, and we'll clearly lay out what's included with the services, uh, which, will re which will reduce our scope creep. And if the client requires a spe um, specific need or additional services outside the um, what was agreed to, um, then we can put in the um, engagement letter the, the ways and means of going about and how we how we can get that work done. 
The engagement letter also reduces risk from a PI insurance, as you as you um, as you know. But it also there's some other points in the engagement letter that where it needs to be um, pointed out and um, discussed. And I've got I've got three here, but one of them is um, with respect to your fee arrangements, giving the client the opportunity to get, um, given the to, for them to pay your fee um, as quickly as possible. And that could be either by credit card, a direct debit facility, BPAY, payment through your website, entering into an agreement with a, uh, with a third party so they can deduct the funds for them, etc. And give them the opportunity, to, um, there's no excuses in how payment is to be received. Another important thing, and you may, you may need to talk to your membership body as well as in relation to our source services. The accounting profession is undergoing some drastic change at the moment with, with, disruption, with this, uh, disruption in IT um, and clients shopping around for the cheapest service in relation to getting the compliance done. And one of the ways of tackling that is um, outsourcing, outsourcing the work to either offshore or onshore. You may need to outline the geographic location of any outsource services provider and the nature and the extent to which the outsource services are used in the delivery of the, of the professional services to that client. So I recommend that if you go if you are going down that track or you have or you have gone down that track, to just speak to speak to your membership body and just to make sure that your engagement letter is um, up to date and correct. What I also put in the engagement letter is on the ongoing engagement. We're making sure that you can cover off any fee increase in the future with CPI or, or a set rate. This will save you, you know, ongoing, um, uh, this will save you another engagement letter in the, in the future. But again, check with your membership body as well. The other duties that, this, that the operations manager should do, uh, the operations team should do as well, is to obviously scan any documentation or notes into, into the practice management database or to, or to the document management system. Update the social media pages as well, whether it's LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and inviting, them, inviting the, the lead to connect. Updating your newsletter list, so making sure that um, if they do or don't, don't sign the, an engagement letter, that they still, you can still keep in contact with them via your, by your newsletter as well. But one thing I forgot to mention as well, in your engagement letter, um, provide an option of services based on the information um, given to um, by, given by, by the partner. So like a, either option one, option two, option three, a gold, silver, bronze packages as well. So we can cover off and get the options of the services of what we can provide the client um, moving forward. And the last thing we do in the, in the, in the three-step process is that after 48 hours, maybe even, um, 24 hours, we can contact the client to make sure that they've received the proposal and that the, uh, and that the outline is consistent with their understanding and that if there's any, any um, issues or things they're not sure about that they can just discuss with you then and there. Now there is a step five to the process and this is something that I really don't like, but because we like, to, we like the engagement letter to be signed within, within, our, within our time frame, but if the proposal is not signed within a certain time frame, what do we do? So what we should be doing is developing telephone and email scripts for each circumstantial um, for the, uh, or excuse that, that the um, lead could provide. For example, for example, when the lead needs to um, when the lead needs to complete a you know, the prior year's compliance work, how long is it going to take them? Um, do, we, do we need to follow up within you know, 30 days, three months, six months? They need to think about the quote and what are their concerns? Um, can, you, can you assist them in there so you can get the, get, the, um, get the documents signed? And when are we going to follow up? Are we going to follow up within 24 hours or are we going to follow up within seven days? Another excuse that we, we get to hear a lot of is, you know, they've got to get the okay from the business partner um, or spouse to, to sign off on the document. Again, uh, how long will this take? Um, do we need to come back into, into their premises to, um, to go through it again with them? And how long will it take before we have to follow up again? Or well, just basically, we need more information or documentation to provide to determine what work is, is required and needs to be done. But again, as far as this step is concerned, 
um, we can um, eliminate or reduce the, the need of this step in, in two ways. One is mentioned before relating to the engagement letter and giving the and giving the lead the um, a time frame on when to uh, when to um, uh, sign the engagement letter by. Otherwise, it becomes null and void. But also set yourself a commitment to when you will cease chasing the client if if it's going to be or the sorry the lead. So if it's going to be you know, two phone calls and a, and an email. That's the maximum. After that, then, and if there's no response, and after that, we'll, we'll just um, either send out an email letting them know that uh, we can't work with them, or let them know that, um, or do we just we just leave it from there. This gives this gives us the time frames as well to put in place so that we can no longer, um, so we don't need to drag out the um, the process of signing up the client. And I think that's fair. I think that um, your time is so valuable at this. Um, at the moment, and anything that um, that the, the league does to um, to expand the process of um, signing an engagement letter may not be a, may not, probably may not represent a very good um, client moving down moving forward. So we've sent out the engagement letter. The client has signed the proposal in the direct debit form. And so what is, what is next after that? So again, once, if we've got a team, that what we need to do is that um, we'll get our sign, client service manager or admin person to discuss and get them in there to discuss what needs to be set up, the ethical letters and the other operational duties as required. And we also get the accountant in there as well to discuss what needs to be done within the, 30, the next 30 to 60 days, um, have a look at job capacity. And if we, if we need to reschedule, we, we need to reschedule. And then thirdly, um, sorry, and then, and, then, and then what we do as well, send an email acknowledging receipt of the, of the engagement letter and, and the direct debit form, and also welcoming the client, welcoming the client to the, to the firm. I've got a sample on the next slide that I'll, I'll, I'll run through with you, but, and, and a tip here as well is that during the process, we'll make a diary note to give, um, to give the client a ring after so much time to, to touch base with them, Advise them how things are going and progressing. See if there's been any changes to the business since since, I've sp uh, since you've spoken last, and give them an update on, on how things are going at the moment. As I mentioned before, um, once we receive the proposal and the doc direct debit form uh, that's been signed, uh, we'll send an email acknowledging receipt of the signed engagement letter. So here's a just a basic example of what needs to be. But, but, but you can say, just very, very simple. Thank you uh, for completing the engagement letter in the direct debit form. Um, the partner and accountant is or are looking forward to working with you to achieve your business goals. We've written to a former accountant requesting the documentation registered relating to the group. Please try to enclose a checklist of the books and records that are required to set up and commence the work. And we appreciate if you, can, if you can provide the items on the checklist by no later than and that, that, that date. So, Again, it's just getting that time frames as well of when we need need the uh, work in by so we can we can start doing the job. And obviously, once again, welcome to our firm. So there's a, just a basic template there for you that you can use, take a copy of, and then you can if you and then you can uh, modify it to suit your needs um, to suit your needs as well. So the proposal's been signed. The document, direct debit form has been signed. Now this is where we get to work and this is what we're, where we really need to um, start working and get everything right from the client experience point of view. So there's a number of things that we need to do. We have to, cre we have to create the job. Yeah, is it, is it a monthly service package, is it an annual compliance job? Um, we can also create the job for a new client process as well. So we have to dock it. So we can create a process or a checklist or a procedure of everything that we need. Um, from from the firm point of view, in relation to what is required to set up to open up the um, the client, whether it's and a couple examples are what needs to be done from an ASIC point of view and a corporate secretarial point of view, what needs to be done in relation to reconciling um, that all the addresses that we have uh, that's been supplied uh, reconciled back to what's on the ATO portal and what's also on the um, on the ASIC portal as well. Um, how are we going to do the family groups? What uh, what's the process in relation to setting up 
um, and making sure that all the trustees are up to date, etc. What's the process that's involved in relation to making sure all the tax returns have been lodged and the BASs are being lodged as well? So there's a massive process in there that we can document. So if somebody's not in, uh, when, the, when the client signed up, then somebody else can, can take the reins and create and, and go on with that job. Do we need to set up recurring invoices? And if, and, um, if we do, and the great thing about the engagement letter, we just need a one line, one line narration saying something along the lines of um, uh, monthly accounting or compliance service or accounting or compliance services as per engagement letter signed. We don't need to go through all the detail in relation to what we've done on the, on the, um, for the job. We have to create a direct debit form facility and making sure that all the details are correct and making sure the correct um, account details and uh, agreed on when we're going to deduct their, uh, uh, their credit card or bank, uh, bank account details as well. Do we need to update um, uh, any records that we have any of, of two things? One, any clients that are on monthly service package offering, or two, or any clients that um, um, that we, we're tracking any new clients coming in from a KPI and benchmarking point of view, or from a from a accountability point of view. How we go about updating the ASIC register? You know, if if the ASIC fees form part of the monthly service package, how's that going to be documented and tracked? Updating the ATO portal, the subscriptions to a cloud to a cloud accounting software that's part of the that's part of the um, service arrangement as well. Filing signed, um, filing everything that we've got in in the, in the proper form, and saved in the proper in the proper folder structure in our document management system. The task scheduler as well, and making sure we set the dates in the tasks as per the proposal and engagement. Like for example. Um, the quarter, monthly or quarterly BASs and IASs, the yearly tax planning, the half yearly and quarterly monthly meetings as well. So there could be more um, items and more tasks that we need to do as part of the onboarding process that we need to um, incorporate there. But the list is, is, will provide us a very, very good start and foundation of creating the checklist and what's, what's required um, um, as part of the process to make sure it's, it is on a um, consistent, it's on a, on a consistent basis. That's the seven steps. Pretty straightforward. As you can see, there is a lot of work involved, and there's a lot of work if you have a team on on who's who's doing what, etc. So, just some thoughts about your on client onboarding process and what you need to consider from a um, production point of view and from a Efficiency point of view. Dates, 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 and times, times, times. Making sure we we're on track with as far as dates are concerned, and we and time frames, and making sure we're on track in relation to each step of the process on what we're doing and what our commitments are to um, getting um, following up, and also um, doing the then doing the work. And just having a think about why should a client join your firm? I'm very surprised to. Um, when I talk to a number of the county firms, that that's a it's a it's a question they they get stuck on, of um, and they can't they can't answer without without um, really really thinking about it. I think that, and if I think that you know, we need to be ready, and we need, we we want we need to have in mind um, why a client should be joining our firm in readiness. So if the question's been asked by the, um, the lead or even a referral partner. Um, another question that came through in relation to the registration is that um, how much of the onboarding process can be delegated to the admin staff or to another staff? And I think that all of it can be. Do you have that one person that can manage, can manage other than a partner that, uh, that manage the process? Um, if, if you're a sole practitioner, obviously it's you. So the documentation and the procedures that you're creating needs to be um, um, uh, documented. So if somebody else comes on board, that they can follow that they can follow suit. But I believe that a, a, any person in your in the firm can and should be managing the process, um, but um, with um, and keeping the partner aligned or anybody's in line aligned in relation to following up the leads and, and catching up with the leads as well. And whether that's um, a, a weekly meeting or a fortnightly meeting, meeting, then so be it. 
And do you have an accountant that can also meet, meet with the leads as well? As I mentioned before, does the accountant, do you, um, if an individual tax return client comes in, uh, what's your policy? Your policy is that the accountant or the manager can catch up with the, um, can catch up with the, with the lead? Or is it that uh, any lead that comes in, the partners need to um, uh, meet with them as well, uh, meet with them first? Any way is 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 a, is a good way as well, or is, is the is, there's no right or wrong answer with this particular question. Can your practice management database save the leads without going buying additional software? I know with um, XPM, for those who are running XPM, I think there's it's called Prospect, and I think with um, if you're running AO or AE, I think it's called Lead or Contact. I can't remember. Um, if you're running APS, I think it's called Lead as well. So maybe um, from a uh, um, a monetary point of view, if we can if, if, we, if we can manage our leads um, through our current practice management database, that would help us um, as well. So yes, for each step, we need to develop a list of checklists, templates, scripts for each step. And um, here at your business first, we've done that as well, and we we work with clients to um, roll it out with them. Do you have a welcome back? Um, uh, so what are, what are your rules for the type of clients that you're going to bring on board? So um, when the leads qualify, we know exactly what type of client we want to work with. What's in your welcome pack? What are, what are your one percenters? And you know, those actions are critical to your business. I mean, do you need a welcome pack? For example, in your welcome pack, is um, the passwords to software access, such as the portal and your document management system. Um, if you've got a team, their bio, their contact information, um, BASs, IASs and tax return, uh, providing with lodgement dates, but not only providing with the lodgement dates, also providing them uh, with the dates when the work needs to be provided to you by, so that it will be done on time, um, it will be on, done on time and lodged on time. Your Skype or Zoom uh, details, tests, uh, more testimonials and uh, whether they're written or on video and uh, even access to or update your social media pages. And there could be some physical um, parts of your um, welcome pack as well, but something as basic as a pen or a notepad or, or a compendium. Something that will just make you a bit different to other accounting firms. Do you need to invest in additional software to maximize efficiency and, and minimize data entry? Um, there's a couple there that I know of, and I know there's heaps out there, but it's something like a Soho or a pipe drive, or do we, do we just use a spreadsheet? Um, can we can we rely on our practice management database as well? Um, we probably need to uh, create an onboarding job detail in the timeframes and who does what in the uh, in the onboarding process as per the seven steps, um, and create an, a job for opening new clients as we discussed before. But the work comes in. Who's going to be doing what um, in relation to the job? Um, and also, is everything going to be electronic? Do we need to do it? Does any paper need to be um, used for, for letters or um, et cetera? But the tip here is that the onboarding process is just is just to start in wowing your client. You need to maintain the standard relationship, right? The standards right throughout the relationship. So um, there is a whole lot more to consider from the client onboarding process and, and uh, really getting the, the client um wowing them right from right from the outset. So, so I've got a couple of questions that have come through. I'll just have a look. Um, have a look. One, um, how do you view products like practice ignition? Um, I've used practice ignition before and I think it's a great I think it's a great tool from a from a um, engagement letter point of view. Um, one thing I do like about practice ignitions in relation to um, um, getting getting clients' details uh, for their credit card details or bank account details, so the uh, monthly debit process can 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 commence, and also, and I think that it also provides a reminder. So that if if the if the engagement letter is a, a twelve month agreement, then it will automatically issue another engagement letter after twelve months. So if you want to work that way, I think that's that's good. But the great thing also about practice ignition from memory is that you can cut and paste different services and different um, paragraphs in, in from your templates into, into the one document. Um, do you, 
Yeah, uh, panel, yeah, sorry, uh, I have got that as part of my notes, but Panalytics also offers a pretty good CRM lead management application as well. So, yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, so, some more questions. Um, do you consider the specific accounting services they are engaged in, in and how the impacts on the process? I don't believe so. I think I think from the step three in relation to the um, uh, the client meeting, the services that are going to be provided will be pretty much well documented, um, as well as part of what's being put on the engagement letter. So I don't think we need to vary in so far as, and in so far as what needs to be done in the seven in the seven steps uh, process. Uh, and also, I believe that um, the, the, we just keep it simple as, as, I've, as, I've, as I've gone through as well. Are there any other practice management tools you, you think are worth looking at with our grown XPM? Uh, yeah, maybe we'd have a talk about that. Um, there, are, there are some pretty good ones out there that but we can talk about, some cloud-based ones and also some server-based ones as well. So. I probably need to know a bit more about your business. So thank you very much for that question. Do you recommend providing a detailed scope of works for each service type to identify scope creep? Absolutely. I even worked with an, I even worked with a client who in their in their engagement letter, they have put in there what's not included in the engagement. So to 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 actually minim, um, uh, minimise the scope creep as well. So I think the more detail we can put in the um, in the engagement letter, the more that uh, there's a there's an understanding in relation to what what's 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 going to be done as part of the as part of the um, arrangement and as part of the project. Do we get a copy of the slides? Yes, yes, you do. You get a copy of the slides. So. Uh, I think I've gone through all the questions. <coughs> so, right. So, so thank you very much for attending today. Um, as because it's July and because it's the start of the financial year, I'd like to have a talk to you. Um, you can ask me anything you'd like. So, just a complimentary forty-five minute one hour discussion at a teleconference with you, just to talk about some of the things that you want to do as part of your business. And, and if you want to have my input as well, in so far as what I think and we get my thoughts and recommendations as well. I'd love to have a chat to see how you're going with your accounting firm. And again, ask me anything um, in relation to um, your firm and even where you're taking it, um, et cetera. So it's basically a three step process. So send your email, send an email um, to inquiries at yourbusinessfirst.com.au with some of the questions, comments, things that you want to uh, talk to me about. I will then contact you with the options of dates and times. And then number three is that I'll organise, again, the no obligation teleconference with you about your firm. Go through the, those queries that you have and provide you with my thoughts and recommendations. It's, um, again, it's complimentary. Um, I want to know more about your business. And I want to know exactly how, how things are tracking with you and, um, and making sure that, um, uh, that, you, that you're on the right track to um, according to your plan. So that, I'll just leave that up on the screen for now. But are there any more questions that are coming through? I've got another thing. What else do you offer? Um, if you check my website, I've got six services that I offer, which is yourbusinessfirst.com.au. Um, your business first purely works with the accounting profession, and um, those who've um, been on the uh, uh, heard me on webinars before and presentations before um, know that um, we only work with the accounting profession and we only deal with um, a, a, the practice management side and consulting side of the um, of the um, of our service offering. So please feel free to give me um, to either visit my website at yourbusinessfirst.com.au or give me a, give me a call. And I can talk to you a bit more about, about it and maybe tailor um, a service to, to your requirements as well.
There's one question here that says, how to get clients on board by internet strategies? Um, if it's, I'm not entirely certain how to answer that other than to say that, um, I think what you, I think what the question's asking is if, if you can pop with the question again, if you can, or provide an explanation. I think what's asking is that if any inquiries come through by the internet or by your website. So, um, with the clients I've worked with in the past, we, when we have when we when we've set up their websites, we've always had a, we've always had an inquiries page, and that inquiries page has gone to a a a mutual email address in the sense of it might be marketing at or might be leads at, um, at at your domain name and so they can quickly track exactly uh, where the inquiries um, as far as the email is concerned um, that there's been an inquiry coming in and then you can follow the process through the seven step process um, i hope i've answered that question um, if i haven't please please send me an email or just clarify the, the question Uh, so, if I'm with Panalytics, do you work in conjunction with them or instead of them? They are good conception, conception but lack content in practice. Um, I do not work in competition with any software provider. If anything, I work with the software providers and making sure that we're using the software um, as best and as efficient as possible with the client. So, um, I, it's always been in conjunction with them and basically asking questions, can the software do this? Can the software do that? We wanted to do this, we wanted to do that. So that's where um, that's where I come from with, with respect to my service offering as well. Um, at this point in time, I'm not affiliated with any software provider, et cetera. So I've got, I've got a pretty much open mind in relation to the software. Um, all right. Thank you so much for attending um, this webinar. I hope you got I hope you got something out of it. Um, please um, look keep a look out for our next accountants webinar accountants connection webinar series for our next one in middle August, in which we talk actually comes in and talk about a particular software called Excello. Um, thank you very much for your attendance. I hope you got something out of it, and we look forward to working with you in the in the future. Once again, please send your inquiries to yourbusinessfirst.com.au. We'd love to have a chat with you, get to know you uh, more about you and your business, and we'll and um, and we'll find out there. So thanks very much. Take care and enjoy the rest of the day.